Hello and welcome to my channel. I went to lose gaming. Today we're gonna have another casual video and I'm just gonna be talking about some stuff as well as farming. And we're actually gonna be farming some stuff for the upcoming characters. Baal as well as Sarah. And I'm still definitely not used to pronouncing Baal's name as Baal. I've like internally called it Bale forever, but you know, you guys have corrected me and told me that it's Ball. So what are we farming for them today? Um, if we take a look at the talent books, we can see that I have a bunch of these and you know, I'm not going to say what character is for or anything, but you know, presumably you're going to need talent books for these characters. But if you want to bring all the talents up to level six for a character, you need 63 of these blue books. 21 blue books per level or sorry 21 blue books per talent to bring it up to level six and that's why we need to farm some of those in order to bring one of the characters up to level six and admittingly i'm going to be using the crit rate food because it helps a lot with the consistency of this run and this is a strategy that i just formulated for this dungeon so we're going to see if i can pull it off consistently or you know whether it's just going to be a total mess but either way, should be interesting, right? And um, actually, I think I have the... Oops, I hit the caps lock. But I think I have the wrong artifact on Eula. We want the energy recharge one. There we go. So the goal is obviously to get full energy for your team. Or at least for the characters that need to use their bursts. That way it's a highly repeatable and reliable strategy. And... Oh, that did not go well. Did it not crit against this guy? That's uh, very, very unfortunate. So I'll probably have to go watch that to see what happened. But I think that either didn't crit or the burst completely whiffed. And if it didn't crit, it's actually pretty comical because I'll show you my Eula's crit rate. Yeah, so let's take a look at my Eula stats. 98.1% crit rate. So, you know, 1.9% crit rate can definitely not crit every once in a while. Which may have happened there. I don't think we actually caught what happened. But anyway, we're going to try this strategy again. The idea is to one-shot the two big samurai with Yula's burst. And then you can use Yomiya's range, just like that, to pop off and take out the three treasure hoarders on the sides. Because normally this dungeon is actually pretty annoying to do quickly and consistently. So this is some uh, good practice for, you know, all the um, talent books that we're going to have to farm through this dungeon. And yeah, I guess I wanted to talk about some other topics like I saw the anniversary rewards and stuff. And you know, it's been a little difficult for me to keep up with everything that's been going on in the Genshin Impact stratosphere. Um, but... Yeah, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm definitely a little disappointed. Oh, wow. Okay. So what's going on with that guy on the side? That's uh, pretty unfortunate. But yeah, anyway. So the anniversary rewards, you know, <laughs> looked pretty darn disappointing. Honestly, I don't think anyone would complain if they allowed, for example, the user to select one of the, um, whatchamacallit, one of the standard banner five-star characters. You know, I think that'd be a great kind of um, gift to the community for people to actually choose one of those characters because it's not like, you know, people really pulled exclusively for those characters. You know, I don't think it'd really affect their sales. And it would just feel extremely generous, right? For such a big event, such as the one year... Oh, okay. I think I'm missing that samurai. Yeah, so this strategy has not been working out. And did Yomiya's burst just completely whiff there? Wow. That's a uh, very tragic, very tragic indeed. 
But yeah, this is going miserably, unfortunately. But you guys get to see like kind of the trial and error process when it comes to figuring out these types of strategies. You know, behind those like amazing clips that, you know, you may see here and there. And I think I actually have enough, but I'm going to do this one more time. Um, just so maybe I can actually pull it off correctly. And now I don't even have Bennett's Burst, sadly, so um, it's not even going to go necessarily according to plan. But we're going to see if we can do it without Bennett's Burst. And Yomi has to be like placed very, very specifically. I think like basically right here in order for her autos to hit all three. So you can see that my placement for her was just a little bit off. And therefore she was not able to use her autos to snipe all three down. But we got one good run and you know, um, I'm just gonna do it one more time, one more time. And yeah, that's an unfortunate thing about the strategies that you know, if Eula doesn't have 100% crit rate, it is not nearly as consistent as domain strategies such as the Artifact Dungeon. There we go. Okay, so I think with a bit of practice, you can get this pretty consistently. Um, but yeah, I definitely got side railed. I haven't even been talking about general Genshin stuff. Why don't I actually farm some artifacts with the rest of my resin for today? I actually asked some of you guys on my Discord, which the link to that will be in the description below, what topics you wanted to see me talk about. And one of which is the most underrated characters, in my opinion. The most underrated character, in my opinion, is actually Amber. But only for whales. Right, only for whales. And if you haven't seen my Yoamiya vs. Hu Tao vs. Luke video yet, I utilize Amber to support Hu Tao. Because if you think about it, right, you can't use Bennett. And I guess the next best option is, interestingly, Amber is one of the next best options. And we're going to set up really quick my team for that domain. And I believe I use Bennett, yes, okay. So. Recently, I guess I've been making one of these casual farming videos for each of the each of the new characters where I use that character to farm for the next character. And I may as well use Yoamiya, even though using Yoamiya in this dungeon is not nearly as efficient as using Ayaka. Right? Ayaka, the strategy with Ayaka here is not only extremely consistent, but it is probably the fastest strategy that you can do. For, you know, highly repeatable Excuse me, highly repeatable runs like this. But anyway, it's pretty much the same strategy, except you replace um, Aika with Yomiya. And yeah, I'm not even sure if we should use Yomiya's burst there. But why don't we give it a try with without Yomiya's burst as well? So what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the most underrated characters. Number one, I would have to say, is definitely Amber, but only for whales, right? And you see Tony too use Amber a lot too to support his uh, Hu Tao, and I use Amber all the time to support Hu Tao as well. Interestingly, she is by far one of the best options when it comes to supporting Hu Tao, because you really can't. Yeah, I actually think um, using Yoamiya's Burst is probably more consistent, so I'm going to switch up my artifacts a little bit. We're going to run two-piece Crimson with the two-piece Shimanawas. And what was I saying? Yeah, Amber. And also, Amber can pull off some pretty wicked nuke combos, right? You can push your Baron Bunny damage up to over 400,000 damage each with, you know, obviously for whales, right? Not for not for regular ambers, but for whales. And that's, you know, an 800,000 damage nuke, which is pretty impressive. I mean, 
you know, of course characters like Ayaka can do that with no support just by pressing Q. But a lot of characters, you know, can't come close to that amount of damage, right? In fact, I'd say most characters in this game can't really come close to that amount of damage. At least for, you know, kind of like a single nuke cycle. But for Constellation 2, or less than Constellation 2 Ambers that cannot detonate the Baron Bunny manually, you know, <laughs> you really only have yourself a torch lighter. And let's be real, most people are going to have a Constellation 0 or maybe a Constellation 1 Amber at best. Right, maybe a Constellation 1 Amber at best. So, yeah, that's obviously not tenable. But I would like to see other whales, you know, try to utilize Amber more because they do have the elegy, right? They do have Amber at Constellation 6 or whatever. And in my opinion, they are definitely sleeping on how good Amber is, right? Because she, amazing enabler for Xing Cho as well, can allow Xing Cho to vape both of his hits and his E pretty reliably, as well as providing the elegy buff, which, which, you know, does 40% attack, 200 elemental mastery, huge buffs to the entire team, along with Amber's Constellation 6, Pyro Resonance, Noblesse Oblige, right? You've just got a really great buff, really great buffer for your team if you have Constellation 6 Amber. Yeah, so the average run with Yomiya versus Aika for this is 5 seconds slower. Right? Because Aika's burst is just <laughs> one of the most absurd things in the game. Right, what is it? 3000% damage multiplier just by pressing Q over the course of 5 seconds. And of course Yomiya is you know, a single target too, right? So that doesn't really help her in this situation versus multiple targets. But she still does this pretty well, in my opinion. Right? Perfectly acceptable performance, but only for, you know, a whale Yomiya. And I guess I'll provide some of my opinions on, you know, what I think about Yomiya as a character. And as well as a lot of the complaints that the community has had about her. I've seen a lot of people complaining about, like, Yomiya's targeting and how her attacks miss. Um, that's really more of kind of a game engine or Genshin Impact Engine issue. And it's just more highlighted in a character like Yomiya. Now, does that mean that they can't fix her problems when it comes to targeting and stuff like that? No, it doesn't, right? Yomiya's charge shots, for example, home extremely well, right? They will track birds down through the air until like they time out or they hit the target, which is pretty impressive. And yeah, I think that was a missed opportunity to make Yomiya's attacks home as well. But, you know, overall, like, most of these shortcomings for Yomiya are very playable around, right? And I know, like, a lot of people say, oh, Yomiya's carried by, like, Kazuha, Bennett, Gongli, or whatever, right? But the, the fact is, is that Yomiya is one of the only pyro characters to be able to fully utilize all three of them and extremely well too right like Klee can as well and Klee is the only other pyro character that can really abuse all three of those supports so in my opinion you know in that sense Yomi is most like Klee but if you were to compare Yomi to a character like Hu Tao right like Hu Tao cannot use Bennett properly except for Except for very specific nuke combos where, you know, you blow up the enemy with just one attack with her burst before um, Bennett's Q heals her over 50% HP. But that's the only situation you should use Bennett with Hu Tao. And, you know, a character like Deluke. Deluke is extraordinarily dependent on Xing Cho, right? So Deluke cannot afford to slot in both Kazuha and Zhongli. Right, so he has to run Xing Chu in order to function or do any sort of reasonable amount of damage. So that's why, you know, Yomiya, like, I get it. She is carried by Bennett, she's carried by Kaza, she's carried by Zhongli. But the fact that she can fully utilize all three of them as supports, their full potential supporting her, does give Yomi an advantage. And she does have other interesting advantages as well, right? Like her E-Infusion basic attack damage 
is the DPS is still really high, right? And in a sense, it's basically unconditional and it's on demand. Now it has downtime, right? Let's take a look at the artifacts that I got. We got some Emblem of Severed Fates. I'm going to go through these first. So here, nothing. Pretty much nothing, but we'll bring this up to... We'll bring this up to level 4 just to see if we get crit rate as well. Because different distributions of crit rate, even if they're not necessarily like an, a total improvement, um, are always helpful to have as options. But no, unfortunately, that's not going to be considered. This one here is defense one. I think I have a couple defense ones that actually have double crit, so I'm not... Uh, well, I have three? Yeah, three defense ones of double crit. I'm not even going to waste my resources on that. So, okay. And finally, we have... Oh, interesting. A double attack, double crit. Uh, circlet. I think I already have one, but may as well lock it, right? You never know when something like that might be useful. Let's take a look at the Shima now, so we got nothing here, nothing here. An energy recharge with one crit. We're going to bring this up to level four. And nope. Nothing worth considering for that. Let's take a look at this stuff. No, no new feathers. Ooh, okay. This could be nice. And we'll bring this one up to level four as well. And alas, this one is not worth leveling up anymore. But we did get this one, this double crit piece. And I'm going to bring this one up to level 12. So that way I don't chicken out midway. We got a lot of these level 4 artifacts to sacrifice anyway. Alright, come on. We want a lot of crit rate, a lot of crit damage. Let's go. Oh my gosh, what happened? Yeah, I don't think this one's worth taking up to 20. Let me take a look. So we have this one, which had two rolls into crit damage. And okay, I guess it's worth taking up to 20 because if we do have one more into crit rate or something, or even one into crit damage, you know, it will have a different stat allocation, which is useful. So let's bring it up. All right, you know, it's usable, I guess, in a situation where you need more crit rate. This is okay. It's got 2% more crit rate than this one does as well as a tiny bit more crit damage. Um, yeah, eh, whatever, you know, it's okay, it exists. And do I still have the crit rate food actually? No, I don't, okay, well, she just has 95% crit rate. So, yeah, oh yeah, in case you're curious about my Yomiya stats, here they are, 95.4. Right now she's using two-piece Crimson with two-piece Shimanaos because I was using her burst during that run. And yeah, there you go. So let me show you guys my balls artifacts right now they are on my Beto and here we have the, the uh, flower a lot of crit damage this one we have a lot of crit rate a lot of energy recharge so this one actually doesn't have double crit but because everything rolled into crit rate and energy recharge I figured this one was still worth keeping right two into crit rate three and energy recharge here we have the energy recharge timepiece unfortunately too many rolls into it you know, attack percent, but hey, it's okay. And we have this Electro Goblet, which has double crit, as well as a decent amount of energy recharge. Not bad, one wasted roll and two flat defense. And we have this piece, this crit rate piece, which actually has all the positive stats, but it's not quite going to crit damage or energy recharge as much as I would like. But hey, we'll take the attack percent, right? That's better than... You really can't complain too much about that. So if we look at her stats, she's at 225.6%, as well as her crit rate to crit damage ratio is a little off, but you know, it's not too bad. And we know that the Emblem of Severed Fates stops scaling at 300%, right? Because if you look at this, you can see that it stops scaling at 300%. And you know, even with, let's say, for example, something that Ball might use, you might see a similar threshold or when her bonuses start to scale a lot less, right? So unfortunately, this actually does have too much energy recharge, right? This provides 125% energy recharge. If you factor in a bunch of other energy recharge, you're already at 
even with a weapon like the Favonius Lance. And also, we're not sure if like the an attack percent goblet will be better. Right? I haven't personally mapped it, and you're gonna have different situations where you know it's gonna be better or it's gonna be worse, right? But I do have a few attack percent goblets to choose from, and I haven't really shuffled them around to kind of experiment or explore with her stat allocation for that. That's pretty much it for this video. Unfortunately, I don't think I really dived into anything too meaningful in terms of discussion topics. And <laughs> oh man, that strategy for the that strategy for the talent domain really threw me off. Looks like I need to finesse that strategy or the execution a little bit better. All right, there you go. That's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy this type of more casual content. I know I just rambled a bit too much in this one. But I'm super excited to showcase Ball at Constellation Zero. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.